Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and if you're like me you've got armies and sometimes you need to take them somewhere doesn't matter what game you're playing could be 40k could be Age of Sigmar could be anything if you've got a significant force you need to move that's bigger than a skirmish force it can often be challenging if you're also like me you build big monsters you know there's just some things that are pretty big and how do you transport those the off-the-shelf magnet racks are fine. Uh, foam is obviously terrible. Never use the foam army transports. Those are just asking to wear away your paint and ruin your paint jobs. So magnets are the answer. But if we magnetize, what do we put the figs on? Well, today we're going to make this thing. Uh, I obviously have already made it, but this video is going to take you how to make an easy simple army transport that lets you magnetize everything right there, pull it out, and you're ready to go, ready to rock, to safely, securely, easily transport your armies. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. All right, before we go about building anything, we have to talk about priorities. And I had four priorities. One, it has to be able to fit a large army. Some of the armies I have are really big. And when you factor in things like summoning and stuff like that, it gets even bigger. Two, it had to fit in my trunk. Uh, I drive a fairly compact car, so it couldn't be too tall. So I had to measure out my trunk and whatever we get has to easily fit in there. Three, it needs to have a removable rack so that I can easily pull it out of the bin and then move it from table to table in between rounds or to take it out to get stuff off or on, whatever the case may be. And finally, and most importantly, number four, it needs to be cheaper than the off the rack alternatives. I have nothing against Magna racks, but when you get the really big ones, that are for transporting really large armies, they are very, very, very expensive. So with those four priorities in mind, let's see what we can do. All right, so step one is gonna be, we go to the hardware store. So I'm at Lowe's and we're gonna go in and we're gonna find the appropriate stuff. So that's where we begin. We gotta get all the components. Let's get to it. First part should be the easiest. I went to the hardware store. I looked over their whole selection of bins. They had many, many, many of them. And many of these could be good for your armies, deciding what size you needed. But this one right here is the last one they had of this size in stock. And it is two feet long by about 15 inches wide inside, which should be exactly perfect, especially because we can find boards and metal to fit. So next up is to grab the metal pieces. Now you can usually find a uh, metal sheets like this at the hardware store make sure you're buying steel don't buy aluminum you need some handles so we got to find the right handles now this is my wife picking out the handles here spoiler this will not end well uh i'm the one who actually picked these out but you got to find some good handles you want the ones that screw in from the front then finally some wood now there you can get simple shims or stuff like that if you want to be relatively thin and lightweight but I, find some, I found uh, one inch by uh, 24 inch by seven and a quarter inch poplar, which was a nice tough wood. It'll be super durable and seven and a half inches wide times two is 14 and a half inches. And we have 15 inches inside. So two of them next to each other is perfect. All right, so we're back going to the hardware store because I may have made a little boo-boo, a little error and uh, grabbed the wrong handles because I need the ones that attach from the front not from underneath because I don't yeah the little bit to the board so we're gonna grab some different handles uh, I'm gonna blame my wife because as you saw in that previous video I mean she was the one who pulled them out of the bin so clearly it's her fault uh, no it was mine I picked them all right that's okay we'll grab the new ones then we get back to it all right let's walk through the assembly step one get the boards together you can use wood glue you can use pegs uh, that you use drill holes for here i'm using hangers from the back of picture frames and just hammering the nails in to keep them lightly in place while i do the rest of my work that's not the final uh, way that i'm going to do them then i drill lead holes into the four corners of the metal uh, the drill bits have been are, are 
tough enough and rated that they can you know drill through metal so we're good to go there and then i start attaching them in place with screws to get everything nice and sealed down all the screws i'm using have uh, flush flat heads that probably has a name i don't know name stuff uh, just so everything is nice and flat against uh, the metal. One thing I'll note is I really don't know anything about craft stuff or carpentry or anything like that. So if I get got things wrong, hey, drop it down in the comments. I'd love to learn uh, because this is all just me basically teaching myself. I draw lead, drill lead holes for the handles and put them at the very edges so I can grab it easily and lift it out and then screw those in. My next move is to sand down the wood. I wanna make sure there's no, cause we did screw a lot in. Um, I'm using five eighths uh, length screws so that that way I don't puncture the bottom of the thing. I don't wanna tear up somebody's nice game mat or anything like that. So I sand it all down from where my lead holes might've pushed through slightly. Then I take a couple pieces of rubber or something like that. It, this was uh, extra pieces from a mat I cut down for my game board when the size of the table shrank. And I'm just going to hot glue it to the bottom of the thing in the center um, just to kind of one push these two together but more importantly to give it some grip when it's sitting in there it isn't completely flush with the edges of the bin and so I don't want it sliding or bouncing back and forth any little thing like this can do you could use any kind of high friction element and just glue it onto the bottom it's not a big deal uh, but I get both of those attached, so it's going to be nice and secure uh, on the bottom there. But really, it's pretty simple. It's attach the two boards together, or one board if you can cut the right size, drill your lead holes, screw in your metal, put on the handles, put in a grippy thing on the bottom. And ta-da, it's attached. And that's the kind of grip you want with those magnets. The magnets are neo uh, neodymium 52s. Uh, which is the strength that I like because that holds your armies nice and tough. Looks like this thing's ready to go. Let's get a, an army on there. All right, so there we go. All done. Case is all made. Army's all loaded. Ready for my games. Uh, all in, this was about $70 if you figure the double purchase of the handles. Uh, but you could do it cheaper, of course. Uh, the wood that I bought was fairly nice, that kind of stuff, but you don't have to spend this much. The key is to have something that's removable, that's efficient, that lets you move your army safely. And I think this certainly meets that. I'd love to see you put down in the comments where you think I could have done better or what I messed up because Lord knows, as I said earlier, uh, this kind of craft project isn't really my specialty, but uh, I hope I got by. If you liked this, give it a like, subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Uh, if you've got any questions about what I did here or the products I used, feel free to drop that down in the comments. I always answer every comment. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.